Hi, this is Karthik from AzureAutomation.com and welcome to Selenium Tidbits. And in this part, we'll be talking about JavaScript and Selenium. So in this Tidbits, we'll be talking about understanding JavaScript, at least focusing on automation. So what does that mean? Meaning, I'll not be telling about JavaScript classes or objects or how to work with loopings or how to work with the if conditions or while loop and all those things. Rather, I'll be focusing mainly on some of the JavaScript which is required to be understood by all of us and how the JavaScript is being used by Selenium to identify those controls. So that's what I'm going to talk. And we'll be talking about some of the browser object models and document object models which is required for our automation testing. All right, so let's get started. JavaScript. And as we all know, JavaScript is a high level, dynamic, untyped and interpreted programming language. And JavaScript is one of the three essential technologies of worldwide web content productions and majority of site has JavaScript running in it. So the three essential technologies of worldwide web or HTML, CSS and JavaScript. All right. And JavaScript runs without any plugin, meaning you don't have to install any special plugin for your browser. It just works fine. So JavaScript and Selenium, how are they related? As we already know that Selenium web driver behind the scenes converts the client code, which is nothing but the language bindings. So the language binding meaning the client code which you write in either C sharp or Java or Python or Ruby or Perl, whatever language you write, all those languages will be converted into JavaScript by your Selenium web driver and this JavaScript will be injected into the browsers like IE, Chrome and Firefox. So Selenium and JavaScript is pretty much tightly coupled. So we can perform whatever operation Selenium perform using JavaScript itself, meaning we can identify a control, we can perform an operation in that control and also we can get the text and whatever you want to do. All those operations can be performed from the JavaScript, whatever Selenium does because Selenium also do the same thing. So to prove the concept, we need to understand the following JavaScript libraries, which is nothing but the JavaScript HTML document object model and JavaScript browser object model. So there are different kinds of steps, of course, available in JavaScript, but in this video, we'll be focusing only on the DOM and BOM. All right. Some of the examples of the JavaScript DOMs are to get the title of a document. So the document here is nothing but the page of the website. So to get the title of the page, you will use document.title. Again, you please see here, it's a document. Because it's a document object model, all the elements to perform some of the operation or to get some information from that page, we'll be using this document as a prefix and dot title. Similarly, to get the ready state of a page, so if you want to see how the page is fully loaded, then we'll be using document dot ready state. So this ready state will return you either complete or incomplete state. So if the page is fully loaded, then it will return you a complete state. If it is not, then it will return you an incomplete state. So this is how you can get the page state using the document object model. So to find an element with an ID. So remember in Selenium, we also find an element using find element by ID. Similarly, in the DOM, we use document.getElementById method to find an element using its ID. And then you can get its value or inner HTML or whatever you want to. And then you can also perform the operation using whatever you have found. So some of the examples of the JavaScript BOM is nothing but the browser object model or opening a new window. So you use window.open. Again, please note here that it's a window, not document anymore. So in browser object model, we use window to perform all the operations. So window.open will open a new window to go back of a page. So here the window is the browser itself. It is not the page of a browser, but the browser itself. So you can go back to the page using the window.history.back. So again, recollect in Selenium, we have something called driver.navigate.back. So that performs the operation and it's exactly the same thing is done using the bomb as well. To get the origin of the page window.location. So these are some of the examples I have listed in the slide, but 
we'll talk more about the different kinds of document object models and browser object models in real time by using a plugin called Firebug, which is most popular as you all know. If not, just go to Firefox and download the Firebug. There is a console option where you can actually write the JavaScript and perform the operation on the fly. So I'm going to open the Firefox for that. So I'm going to type Firefox and I have already installed the Firebug in here. So you can also install the Firebug by searching uh, by going here to the extension add-ons and then from here you can uh, search for the Firebug and you can install from here. All right, so I'm going to navigate to the uh, to one of the site. Maybe I'm going to go to the Amazon dot uh, dot com or dot in whatever it is, and then let's wait for the page to load up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this Firebug, and this Firebug is a pretty uh, pretty handy tool because you can use this for identifying the element uh, or perform an operation using that. So you can see there is a console here. So this is pretty handy because uh, you can write a JavaScript here itself. So uh, let's say you want to identify a control or maybe the search text box. You can just right click inspect with Firebug and you can see that the uh, the element is being identified here. So to tab search text box, it's just coming up here and you can see it's an ID here. So let's say I want to get the uh, get the document state here. So Again, as I already told, you need to just type document and control space. See, the whole thing comes up. And if I hit dot and space, it just brings you an intelligence where you can actually see uh, all the methods uh, and properties available. So I'm actually going to use document dot ready state. There we go. And just click this run. You can see that it's going to display you the message here so it says that the document is ready now uh, meaning it is complete so let's say if I refresh this page and by this time if I run this you can see it is interactive meaning it is still not ready yet so now again if I run it says it's complete right so this is how you can get the ready state of a document let's say if I want to perform some operation in this particular test box so how do we do in Selenium? We just identify the control using its ID or CSS or whatever it is. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing what we do in Selenium. I'm just going to copy this ID. I'm going to the console and using this document dot find, oops, document dot get element by ID. And you can see there are different kinds of method here as well get elements by class name, elements by name, tag name, uh, name, uh, ns, and get items and get selection. So I'm going to use the get element, uh, oops, get element by id here. All right, and then I'm going to pass the id which I just identified. And then let's say I want to set some value into that particular test box. So I'm going to say value is equal to let's say I'm going to search for a test right and now if I run this you see it just passed a value in there so this is exactly what Selenium is also doing right now the dot send keys or dot text is doing exactly the same thing so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this search button as well so how to do that just right click inspect with firebug this is going to bring you up the uh, the particular uh, input type uh, maybe let's say I'm gonna search using uh, using this mm, let's go to the fire path and just click this and go in here instead of X path I'm gonna use CSS and I'm gonna go over here so I'm just gonna show you some other way that you can use to perform some operation so I'm gonna copy this and then I'm going to the console and now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use get element by class name. And here I'm going to pass the class name and let's remove the dot. It's not required. And now if I do a, a submit, 
and if I run this, it won't run. The reason is the get elements by class name. You can see there is something called elements, meaning it is actually returning you a collection. So if you run this, you can see it's an HTML collection. So you cannot just do a uh, click or submit here. Rather, you need to exactly point out which element you are going to perform. So the element is going to be the first element. So I'm using this index of zero and then I'm going to pass the submit and now the intelligence won't work. So don't try that. And now if I run this, oops, sorry, uh, instead of the submit, let's say if I just put click and then if I run this, you can see it's just clicking the button and it just brought you something else. Great. So now the search is hop is happening. And now let's say if I want to uh, identify or uh, want to see how many result I got in here. That's my next test. So if I want to perform that, then we can easily do that as well. So what is this particular element? Of course, it should be a UL, which is nothing but the unordered list. So you can just go over here and see uh, what is that. Okay, this is an LI and you can see it's all an LI. And this is a unordered list. All right, so this is an unordered list and this is the guy who is going to return you the result. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy that ID and let's say I wanna search for that particular ID. So get element by ID and I'm gonna pass that particular ID and let's say, all right, first let's say, what is this? If I run this, all right, so it's gonna return me everything, which is great. And then I need to get the li, which is nothing but the list index. So for that, I'm going to do get element by, let's say I'm gonna search using its tag names. So elements by tag name. So the tag name is nothing but li. All right, now if I run this, you can see I'm getting all the list index of that particular unordered list. And let's say if I want to get a particular text from that particular list index, then zero, which is nothing but the, the first value. And I'm gonna say inner HTML. So if I run this, you can see it's giving me nothing for now. The reason is the li actually does not have any text in it. And if you see here, if you just right click and go to the firebug, what is that? The text is actually there in this particular class. So I'm gonna copy this particular class. You can see the hierarchy is even more deeper from the list index, right? So I'm gonna go to the console and I'm gonna find again get element by elements by class name and then I'm gonna pass the class name in here and again I'm gonna do a zero which means the first value and then I'm gonna get its inner HTML. Now if I run this, oops, I think I think I need to pass the capital letter inner HTML and then if I run this you can see that I could see the home check new instant ovation test all right so it's just returning me this particular test similarly you can get the complete list of all the items using a for each loop as well so I have already written that so what I'm going to do I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to copy paste this and you can see it is pretty simple right now so I'm using a for loop to perform the operation. So let me clear this guy and let's run this. You can see it's returning me all the list index which is available in here, right? So these are the different way that you can perform the operation using the JavaScript in the browser using the Firebug. And the next thing we're gonna talk about is the browser object model. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna type window dot let's say I'm gonna use uh, open 
oops window dot uh, you can see there are a lot of uh, options available so window dot open and if I open HTTP google dot com and if I hit run you can see it's just opening a new window and it's opening the Google as well so similarly we can also do a lot of operation using window so window dot you can see what are the methods available using this particular window so the the another method which I told to perform a uh, back operation uh, using a navigate method we can also do that so what I'm going to do I'm going to just search for uh, navigate sorry using the history method history uh, dot and you can see what are the methods which are available so back or forward whatever it is so I'm going to use back and then if I hit run you can see it's taking me to the back of the page right and let's say if you want to scroll down to the page then you can also use something called scroll so window dot scroll to so there is a method called scroll to and then you can also scroll to the down of uh, to the the bottom of the page so uh, the parameters are zero comma and then I'm gonna use document here because uh, it's just a page which we have to uh, go down from the browser so document dot body dot scroll height all right so now if I run this you can see it's taking me to the bottom of the page directly right if you want to go to a specific control you can also do that let's say if I want to come exactly to this Fitbits then let's see what is that all right so let's say this is the due which I want to come in all right so I'm just gonna copy this and I'm going to the console and let's say I want to go there directly so I can also use directly the document document dot get element by ID I think it is ID right yeah so just gonna pass that and there is something called scroll into view this method will take you directly into that particular view so I'm in the bottom of the page now if I run this directly take me to that particular view right so these are the different kinds of operation that you can do using the browser object models and document object models of JavaScript and this is exactly what is being used behind the scene in Selenium as well so we'll talk more about running these scripts in Selenium and perform the operation from there right so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day